So last time we saw how we can test our models, how to test our views. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to properly arrange this such that we don't really duplicate ourselves and we make our tests more descriptive and more faster in the long run. So up front, you will notice that the code we wrote here, you see this code I'm highlighting? It is the same code we wrote here. You see? So that's not cool. So also, if we go to our test views over here, you will see that this data here, we are like pretty much hard coding it. Similarly, it is the same data here. So what I want to do in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can properly set up your tests to make sure you don't really duplicate different things. So what I like to do is I like to set up like a help, a utils folder. So I'm going to go outside here then I'm going to set up a utils folder. So I'm going to be utils. So since you're going to be importing from it, we need a under init. So under init over there. So also you notice that over here, we are importing from test case. Similarly over here, we're importing from test case. And that's because we really want to be getting access to what they offer. We might not want to even be inheriting from it every time. So over here, we need to set up a class that's going to be doing all the setup of the things we need for every test we run. So over here, I'm going to have a class. I'm going to call it test setup. Okay. So it's going to inherit from test case. So over here, now we can import test case. So from Django test import test case okay so over here so for the life cycle of a test there are two functions that actually run before a test runs so one of those functions is called setup and also another one is called tear down so i'm going to have test tear down okay so this is the function that runs first and then the test can run and then this is the function that runs after the test has run so over here we can set up things like the test data and also things that each test should have before it runs so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go where we have the this here where, where we are coding this user and then i'm going to cut it out and bring it in our base so i'm going to bring it here i'm also going to add a print here so i'm going to do test started so i'm also going to put a print here just to illustrate what will be happening so here I'm going to say test finished. Okay. So now that we have this, we can come over here in this test views. Remember we removed the, the user here. So we can come back over here and instead of us inheriting from this test, we can inherit from our own. So here I'm going to, in, in, I'm going to import our util. So from utils, it's going to be dot test setup. Let's import Test setup. I believe that's how we called it. So we called it utils. Oh, we are writing tests inside here. So that's not what we want to do. So let me take it away. So we're going to have a, a file here called setup tests. So that's why we're going to have this code. Now we can now it's going to be utils slash test setup test import test. No, not test case. Import test setup. So this is what we want to import here. And now that we have that, we should be able to say self.user, which is this, and it should work fine. Okay, so now if we came here and ran back our tests, let me first save this file. Just rerun it. You see that here, for every test that we have in the test views, we see that it starts and then it finishes. It starts and then it finishes. So so yeah, so this is what these two do. And then the user, since this is we are inheriting from this, we can say self.user anywhere, even in the subclasses. So this is a subclass of this of this parent class. Okay, so that's how that one goes. So also let's solve this issue where we are basically creating a user like this and also having to duplicate the same code in the test for for to do mode, I believe, here. So instead of us duplicating this one, I'm gonna cut it out. So you see, and then I'm going to go to the model, test model for authentication. So over here, I'm also going to cut it. So I'm going to go to our setup. So that's going to be here. So I'm going to set up another function. So besides having these lifecycle methods or these lifecycle test functions, we can create our own. So here we can have a function called create test 
user okay so create test user text himself so over here now we can this guy create a user so since we want to use what this user will be returning we can return that user we can do return user and i'm going to import user up here because we need the user so authentication what does the import user so that means that every time we call create test user it's going to create the user and also return for us that user so now over here we can come so over here in the model we can come and say user equals self dot create and see how we called it so test setup we said create test user okay so this is what we want to call so in this model we can come and say self dot create test user like this so that should return for us the user and we can use the user here so i'm also going to go to this other class so this other test here and also do the same thing so we can do user equals self dot create self dot create test user like this okay so now that we have changed this we need to change where we are importing from so i'm gonna go to this import for the view and then i'm gonna repress it so we're gonna import this test setup that's gonna be here so we can report repress this so this this inherits from test case by default that's now that's now what we want to inherit from so let's inherit also i'm gonna go to this other to do make sure we have the same thing also the this test case so now if we run back this test you see that things are still working and we are not duplicating stuff here okay so this can be useful of course this is a very simple application and i'm just showing you like the simple scenarios but in your in your in your application you might have a lot of things so this so you can see the importance of this at scale so similarly this instead of us doing this of course we know that so of course we know that this user has an email and that's the that we can access that email by doing user.email so you can do this should be user.email since this is a user instance okay so now if you run back the test should work fine okay so same thing for the to do now going forward we are going to be needing to test things like permission let's say a user is logged in and they want to delete a to do we want to check if they are the ones that created it so i'm also going to have another another function to create another test user so here we can say create test user create test user we can put two here that we can cre create two users so this one will have a username let's have two here email two here and also this should do now we can turn the users so that means that now we have created a way that we can create two different users at the same time so that's gonna work in a way that we can be able to say user one equals self dot create test user and then here we say user two equals self dot create test user two like this and now we can check things like permissions we can create a to do using one user and check if another user can delete it those kinds of things so let's also remove it okay so that's gonna do it for now i hope you learned a little something about this test setup and teardown methods and how you can create some functions that you can reuse in other places so in the next video i'm going to be showing you how to test some things on the user login so thanks guys for watching if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i'll talk to you soon